Hello Pirates. This video is about how to build a High Guard Warden. It's funny to be doing that in 2020 because this ship is now, I guess, over two years old. But people are still using them. It's a very popular ship to have in the defense fleet protecting your base. And I hope this video helps you understand why. So the main reason is the ship actually suits very well the current meta game, meaning most people are using explosive or penetrative conquerors, such as howlers, uh, basilisks, which are mostly explosive or subjugators that have UAV dealing penetrative damage. And these are the, how the, the high guard warden's strengths. You know, it has a good amount of penetrative and explosive deflection. It also has a tactical module slot, which most people are using with the nav array uh, tactical module. It's a very old one, but it has a friendly field with good range that triggers resonance if the other ships of course have the resonance capacitor so the two have to go together the navigation array on the warden and then resonance capacitor on the other ships which have to be within the range of the navigation array and that range we'll see soon is 80. A few more reasons, it's a great, great countermeasure ship. And because of that, the main build we're going to discuss here today is a countermeasure build. It has this generic accuracy bonus. We can see it here of 25%. And it's the only way countermeasures can get better accuracy. No specials can improve the accuracy of countermeasures such as the Sprint or the Night Watch. It also has very good you know, countermeasure reload, uh, anti-missile, anti-mortar reload, and very, very good countermeasure extra range, meaning depending on the range, the base range of the countermeasure you put in here, it's actually going to cover your entire base. It also has a projectile speed bonus, meaning the countermeasures will fire and travel a lot faster to meet incoming fire. If you need two more reasons to use it, look at the fields that the high guard warden has. The first one is a friendly field, helps the other defenders. And again, it only helps defenders dealing penetrative or explosive damage. So again, it fits the meta game we have right now where most people are using Gorgons and Houndmasters. Gorgons usually deal penetrative damage, Houndmasters deals ex explosive damage. And so when you look at the field, it gives reload to both ships and no matter where they are they don't even need to be close as long as they're defenders dealing explosive or penetrative damage they will gain a reload bonus and they will gain projectile speed all of them and then it has a hostile field which has a big range 200 and reduces combat and turn speed and projectile speed of the attackers so again as we just saw on the previous page at, on one hand, it's making your countermeasures travel faster with longer range and faster projectile speed. And it's making your enemies move slower and their fire moves lower with a debuff on projectile speed. Of course, this hostile field can be countered if your enemies have tactical field resistance. So let's say they have 50% tactical field resistance. These effects will immediately be cut in half, but still it's something. If you're going to build one or refit one to be a more modern, uh, you know, it seems to me to the, the two setups that would make more sense are either you put the D6TA, the green armor here, or the D6STSL, the blue, you put both of them. They're going to increase your total armor points for like from 3.5 to 5.3 million, thus increasing longevity of your ship. And then put explosive. I mean, if you want to counter rocket howlers or mortars from basilisks and stuff like that. If you're more concerned about subjugators, then you might want to have a penetrative armor here instead. But I'd go with one of these two combos here. Up to you. The tactical module I mentioned before was the navigation array. It really serves no purpose. I mean, forget about the bonuses it gives here. What matters is it's giving you resonance and it's friendly, meaning it triggers resonance on your own ships and not your enemy's ships. 
It's not a heavy module. The other modules that trigger resonance are heavier and or have shorter range. So this is the one that people choose. If you want to visualize what this range of 80 means, so when you're positioning your guard, you put them within that range. Since the, the high guard has no combat speed, doesn't move, just set the patrol range to 80 and you can see a white circle around it. And as long as your other defenders are within that circle and they have the resonance capacitor, they will get the bonuses because they're being affected by the aura. And of course, they only get the bonus until the high guard warden dies. Once it dies, you have no aura, you have no bonuses. I think most people are putting countermeasures on their high guard warden. So the mix will change, will vary a lot based on what's attacking you, what's doing you most damage. So let's say it's howlers with rockets, probably sprints are your best choice. If it's uh, mortars or, you know, or UAVs, then sprints and gales are good. If it's something long range, then maybe the night watch is a good choice. But Again, if tomorrow it's something firing missiles, then you come here and you replace everything with the MDS-3. You keep changing the, the countermeasure based on, again, what's doing you the most damage. For a countermeasure ship, um, these are the specials I recommend. So first of all, down here, we have the hydroatomizer nozzle. It gives uh, most countermeasures, except for anti-missile, good bonuses. Uh, the other option is countermeasure loader 4. Then the subaquatic propellant is up here. This is to give countermeasure reload and projectile speed. High velocity rounds, it's only here for again, the plus 100, 110% projectile speed. Hyper 30, projectile speed, evade, they will help you survive longer. A, same with splash damage reduction. Shielded circuitry, so it protects you against stun. Now, you know, you might take a chance and not have that in here if you're covered by an anti-rocket turret, which works most of the time. So it's up to you if you want that or not. And then I chose to put ion thrusters simply because of more evade and splash damage reduction. So I'm kind of trying to do stuff here to make it last longer and give all countermeasures more projectile speed, reload, range. That's the gist of it. Now... You might say you don't need, you don't want countermeasures, and some people think the best defense is offense. In that case, you could simply load your high guard warden with rockets. It's also a good build. You use the same rockets we used in the howlers, the death rattle. Uh, you put desolation warhead or high explosive shells for, for more damage. You use the resonance capacitor in this case. The aura will self-trigger, so you gain 36% damage bonus. Agility System 4 for evade and anti-stun. Flanged warheads for crit hits and more range with the rockets. Cluster warheads 2 or 3 to get more reload. I think 2 is enough. 3 might be overkill, and it's a lot heavier. For the final special, it depends on what you need. You might go explosive upgrade for more damage. Explosive force for even more damage, but then less range. Explosive scope if you want more range, but then you lose damage. Or if the meta game changes and all of a sudden people are repairing your, your base defense with subs, hydrodynamic shells force so they hit underwater. And that's it. I mean, I think once Gorgons and Houndmasters become old, outdated ships, Maybe the High Guard Warden won't be a good option anymore, but right now it is. Remember, if you want to have the 36% extra damage from Resonance, the other ships need the Resonance Capacitor and be within that 80 range of the High Guard Warden. And the High Guard Warden, of course, has to be alive. Once it dies, the aura goes away. Some players were building them as rock, a rocket ship, as i just shown, or even a mix. I mean, half rocket, half CM, and then you kind of have to mix the specials up so they work. Remember from time to time to ask yourself what's damaging your base, what's getting to your base, and adjust the countermeasure mix based on that. Right now, it's probably sprints and night watches and gales would probably make more sense. 
Thanks for watching. If you're still confused about the whole resonance beat, watch this video here about how resonance works. It explains the basics. If you're more concerned about attack rather than defense, there's this other video here about the howlers. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit the buzzer to receive notifications when I release new videos. Take care. Have a good one.